Allied infantry always welcome the sight of a Sherman tank. Its combination of speed, firepower and quick repair made it an invaluable ground weapon. Medal of Honor Frontline is the fourth game in the Medal of Honor series released for PlayStation 2, Xbox and GameCube as something of the console's reply to its PC counterpart, Allied Assault. It's not quite as refined or technically proficient as Allied Assault, but as a console shooter, it's up there with the best of them, and still a great game that lets you frolic around multiple European locations, shooting things like it's going out of fashion. Like most of the other games in the series, you just play as a faceless, voiceless marine taking on missions around Europe as you fight the never-ending forces of Nazi Germany. In this case, you're a dude named Jimmy, given a series of missions to undertake with constantly changing objectives and playstyles. Some missions require you to sneak around disguised as a Nazi officer, destroy important military resources to cripple the enemy, or just move through a level in a linear fashion, shooting everything that gets in your way. You always have a series of objectives that need to be completed before you can move on to the next level. Though these are mostly often right on the beaten path and you can't really miss them if you tried. This constant shift in gameplay mission to mission is the game's biggest strength and something that keeps you engaged. When you finish a particularly tiresome mission, you can at least take solace in the fact that the next mission isn't just going to be more of the same. Occasionally you're given a small group of allies to fight alongside with. Now, these guys tack out the odd enemy every now and then, which is nice, but in some of the more cramped urban areas, they're just more good at getting in your way than anything else. Most of the levels are well put together, though sometimes it can also be a little hard to tell where you're supposed to go next, as the way forward isn't entirely clear. If you do get stuck there, you can press the select button and the game's even kind enough to tell you what you're supposed to do next. For a PS2 game, Frontline does a pretty decent job with the amount of missions on offer. You'll see some pretty varied locations as you progress through the campaign. The real standout is the opening D-Day mission, something that was truly impressive on the PC back in the day. And in Frontline, they've done an admirable job of recreating this historical event with the limitations of the console. 30 seconds! It can be a bit up and down, however, and there's some really low polygon areas with crappy layouts that stick out like a sore thumb. But most levels and animations are pretty good across the board, with some nicely detailed weapon and character models. I mean, it's not as well-rounded or extensive as the PC version, but it's still pretty damn impressive and fun to play, heightened again by the fantastic sound design that's prevalent in almost every single game in the series. You also move through villages, the French countryside, and all manner of Nazi facilities and compounds. As you'd expect, the enemy roster entirely consists of infantry units, different ranking soldiers with unique weapons and appearances. These guys are all pretty easy to take out, though later in the game they do get the ability to kind of hop around a bit when they're attacking you, making accurate shots a little bit trickier. They also gain the innate and annoying ability to survive multiple headshots, or say a point-blank range shotgun blast to the chest. Now I get that as you go on they're supposed to be tougher and all that, but come on, a load of buckshot to the chest should pretty much put an end to things. Half the time you knock these guys off their feet with a sniper round or shotgun thinking you've finished them off, but they just end up getting back to their feet a few seconds later, going right on back to firing at you as if it's nothing. But then I guess this is probably the only sensible way they could have increased the difficulty in the campaign. Also I should mention that in the last few levels there's a huge difficulty spike and you're probably going to get your ass handed to you more than once. But overall, I don't really have an issue with the shooting for the most part. In fact, it's actually kind of easy to come to grips with, and I got the hang of it pretty early in. When firing from the hip, your shots aren't entirely accurate, but you can bring a crosshair up with the press of the left trigger, allowing you to be a bit more precise and go for that much-needed headshot. You can't, however, strafe when you're in this aiming mode, making you something of a sitting duck. Now, this can make the shooting seem somewhat slower than other games, coupled with the fact that Jimmy reloads and swaps weapons out like a senior citizen but it is keeping in touch with the game's realistic feel, and thankfully this mechanic also applies to the enemies, so at least it's somewhat balanced. It's not the type of game you're going to be bunny hopping around and spraying your MP40 like a madman, let me put it that way. Now, I said earlier that it has a great variety in the missions, which is true, though this doesn't mean that every mission is perfect. In fact, the quality kind of goes back and forth constantly. I find that the missions where you do little more than search and destroy are the weakest in the game, they just feel the most derivative, and it's the kind of thing you've seen a hundred times before. You know the type, you know, make your way to point A, man the MG42, plant some C4, blah blah blah, take out the guns, that kind of crap. But this kind of shit was played out even for its time, and it hasn't entirely aged yet. The missions where you get to do stuff like taking on enemy disguises and are actually required to do something more creative is where the game still holds up. 
like the one where you're taking out Nazis in a moving train as you hunt down a highly ranked officer. Or the one where you're trapped inside a cramped submarine, sabotaging it before making an explosive escape. If every mission was like this, it would have been much better off, but these kind of generic half assed levels are what really drags the game down. It's not that they're bad, but it's just that you've seen it all before and its mediocrity seems even more prevalent by today's standards, considering the abundance of military shooters that are currently plaguing the industry. At the end of the day though, this is still one of the best games in the series and arguably one of the best Medal of Honor games for the consoles. If you can overlook the dated visuals, the game still does kick all kinds of ass in certain missions, and it can still provide 6 or 7 hours of entertainment as you make your way through its campaign. After this game, the series kind of lost its way for the consoles and PC, and in the next video, I'll take a look at the next game in the series, Rising Sun, and we'll see how it all fares.